Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our April 2020 webinar. Today, we're going to be looking at scripting in master. Uh, specifically, we're going to be looking at choosing which programming language uh, that you want to use to write your scripts. It's obviously quite an important choice. Once you start learning one particular programming language, you might be feel more tied into that particular one. So what we're going to do today is uh, discuss the capabilities of different languages and see which one might be right for you. So there's four SMT people on the call today uh, and we're all going to be discussing different aspects of the different languages. So my name is Sam Webster, I'll just be sort of guiding the whole process and also with me we have Dr. Caroline Poiser who's part of our research team uh, and we'll be covering the MATLAB side of things. We have George Barron, who's a software engineer with us, who will be covering the Python. And we have Connor Thornley, who is going to be covering the uh, C-sharp side of it and is a software engineer with SMT as well. Now, before I go any further, I just want to double check that I can actually, uh, everyone can actually hear the audio correctly before we move on. So let me just take one second to verify. Okay, cool. Okay, so a bit of information again on this webinar. So this is primarily a comparison of the three main supported programming languages, uh, and that's with respect to actually scripting in master. So in terms of who this is suitable for, it's users who are looking to write scripts within master but aren't currently tied to any particular language. So that could be, um, you just know of scripting in master and haven't had the chance to look into it at all yet or maybe you have a matlab license somewhere in the company and you're wondering whether or not you should request access to it uh, basically for anyone who, who needs that extra push in a certain direction for a certain programming language now it's important for me to say that this is by no means an exhaustive list of functionality for any of the languages or for their associated software packages um, what we've tried to do is just focus on some key areas which are a bit more critical in terms of in relation to scripting in master itself. So the three languages we're going to be looking at, we've got Python, we've got C-sharp and MATLAB. So to start off with, a bit of a word on the master API, so the application programming interface. Um, and this is what you would use to actually access all of the properties within master, um, digging down to find all of the small properties or any of the large, uh, broad properties, that kind of thing. Um, and it's important to note that the structure for this, the API, matches for any programming language. So you might find that when you're trying to write some code in these individual languages that the uh, the syntax might be slightly different, the way in which it's written, but generally the path you need to follow to get to certain properties should be the same. So there's an example for this at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so for Python, it uses something we call snake case as an example of it there to get to some um, a, a property on a bearing. And you can see that all of the properties are separated by the underscore, whereas C-sharp, which is written in something called Pascal case, is written slightly differently. Um, so, yeah, you can see that they're, they're written in a different way, but the, the path used to get to those particular properties are the same. So this should be applicable to every one of those three programming languages. Now, before we go any further, I do want to say that we are open for receiving questions during the course of this webinar. Uh, on the GoToWebinar panel, you should be able to see uh, questions panel, which you can you can write questions in there. I'll put those to the appropriate people, and we'll either try and answer them at the end of the webinar, or if we can't answer them on the spot, we'll contact you a bit later on with your answer. So what we're going to do today is basically break down each of these languages into a few different major topics uh, that you can see on the screen right now. Um, we'll address each for every topic. We'll address each of the languages in turn. So in terms of webinar availability, uh, as always, the recording of this webinar will be put onto the SMT website and that should be available pretty soon after, after this is finished recording. 
Uh, also, if you don't want access to the video but want the presentation itself, we'll be able to provide that as well. So if you are keen on getting it, please let us know and we can get it get that out to you as well. So to get underway with the language comparison. So what I want to start off with is the major strengths of each of the programming languages. Uh, and over on the right hand side, when you get to these title slides, there's some things that we might be discussing in this particular section. Uh, it's by no means an exhaustive list, just to give you an overview. So we'll be focusing on some notable strengths of each one. Who might be the main user base for that particular language, just to give you some kind of overview of who it's targeted at. And then just any other general information. So I'm going to start off uh, handing over to Connor, who's going to talk about C Sharp in this respect. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, so the .NET API targets users with a more software-oriented background, but it has also a great support for all abilities from the S&D development team, as Mafta has also written in C Sharp, which is another .NET language. We also have uh, VB.NET, but for the purposes of this, I'm just going to be talking about C Sharp. Uh, C Sharp is designed to be a heavyweight application programming language, as opposed to some of our other supported languages, which are more often used for scripting. Uh, its concept of properties is something that Master uses throughout, hence the decision to call uh, methods that appear as properties in Master, Master property. So anything from the length of a shaft or the width of a bearing in Master uh, will translate to a master property in scripting. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, as I said, we're talking about C-sharp, but uh, when we're talking about .NET scripting, but other .NET languages all work the same way, so VB, F-sharp, etc. Oh, right, so next, moving on to Python and George. So Python is one of the uh, fastest growing and most popular programming languages today. Uh, it means you get a lot of online support from places like Stack Overflow and whatever. So if you have problems, it's very easy to look it up online. There's also a vast wealth of packages and frameworks at your disposal, which is one of the main or one of the key points to possibly use in Python. It includes things like uh, scientific packages like NumPy, Scikit-Learn, Pandas, Matplotlib, etc. Uh, the language itself is very beginner friendly. It's got a very simple syntax. You can get, uh, you can learn the language very quickly, uh, but it is also quite a powerful and flexible language as well. So just because it's simple doesn't mean it's not also a powerful language. Uh, there's very little boilerplate. So in languages like C Sharp, you have to have a bunch of different files, uh, for instance, a C Sharp project and things like that to get going, whereas in Python, you can just have a single file, one single script, and everything can be contained within that. Uh, and also, notably, Python is completely free and open source, so you can download it right now if you want, uh, and you can also use any development environment you want as well. And finally, moving on to MATLAB with Caroline. Hi, uh, so MATLAB, was designed specifically around mathematical and scientific purposes. So it's made to be very simple for data analysis and plotting. MATLAB stands for matrix laboratory. So it was made to do matrix operations very easily, do element wise operations on data arrays. Uh, it's got lots of inbuilt libraries with functions that will take care of a lot of operations without requiring, re requiring you to have an in-depth programming knowledge. It was designed with engineers and scientists in mind. And um, from that point of view, it was designed for lots of ease of use to be easy to get going without having to have too much computer science knowledge. Uh, the difference between MATLAB and the other two languages we talked about is MATLAB is a commercial software which you will have to purchase. You will have to purchase uh, licenses to be able to use it. OK, thank you. So next, we're going to go on to ease of use of the software. So obviously quite an important thing if you're not a programmer per se. So some of the main things we'll be focusing on here are things maybe like the the file or folder structures. So are you able to contain your scripts in a single file or do you need a full folder structure to be able to get them to operate? 
uh, how complex is the syntax you need to get your head around and become familiar with before you can use it. And then even things like how difficult is the initial setup procedure? So are you going to have to have some background computer knowledge to be able to actually get this thing set up rather than just installing and go? So again, we'll start off with C Sharp. Yep. Uh, so C Sharp is well documented and it's designed to be used in an object oriented fashion. Uh, it is a compiled language and it requires a few additional files that were talked about earlier uh, that describe the structure of the program. These can be auto generated in master. Um, in the scripting tab, just near the top, uh, you can click create.net solution. Uh, this will also generate all the files you'd need to write C Sharp. Uh, also, as C Sharp is a compiled language, it currently has the fastest runtime of the scripted languages we provide. Uh, but that being said, its syntax is possibly the steepest learning curve just because of the extra symbols uh, in the syntax. Uh, C Sharp is a strongly typed language. Uh, that means you might be required to know what the type of something in your code. Uh, so for example, you can see this, uh, the, the red line, the top red line, um, shows my design. Uh, and the line starts with the word design, which is its type. And on the right side of the equals, we assign a value to that. Uh, but as you can see in the second red line, um, we know what type we know what type the variable is because of the value you're assigning it on the right. It says design, so you can omit the first word and replace it with a var. Uh, you may also notice that each line ends with a semicolon. In C sharp, this is used to terminate a statement, meaning you can write a single statement across multiple lines. So uh, for in these examples, you could move the everything on the right side of the equals onto the next line. Uh, as long as there's a semicolon on the end of the second line, then it would just be one statement. Uh, for any given method, loop, or other block, we surround it in curly braces. Uh, this provides boundaries to the code that help the computer throw away unimportant memory. Uh, this isn't very important to know if you're just using C sharp for some basic properties, but it might be quite important if your scripts quite, get quite large or quite intensive uh, to try and improve performance. So here's an example. If you declare a variable within a block of code, you want to avoid accessing outside of that block. So uh, as you can see, the first, the first variable i is an integer and is assigned a value of zero. And in the second block, there's a variable i that is a string and is assigned this the string that says zero. But outside of either of those uh, curly braces, I doesn't exist at all. Uh, you can also see a link there for more information. Uh, at the moment, C Sharp has probably the quickest initial setup just because of the support we've provided for it. Uh, so you simply download Visual Studio Code install the C Sharp extension, click that button in master, and then open the folder in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so next, ease of use in Python. So the initial setup for uh, using Python is slightly more involved than the C Sharp. Uh, it requires some being slightly comfortable with the command line. Uh, fortunately, we do have some documentation available online. Uh, to guide you through this process and of course we offer support to also help you through it. Once you are set up however, uh, actually writing and running Python scripts is incredibly easy. It's, it's very simple and it's very intuitive. Uh, the vast array of libraries available also make the development process extremely fast. Most libraries have implemented the things you want to be able to do already so you can just access them and use them. Uh, Python itself is a uh, dynamic and strongly typed language, so this is slightly different to C Sharp. Uh, but all it means is that uh, it means that uh, when you define a value, when you define a variable and give it a value, then that type it has that type, and you can't change it. 
Uh, however, I have an example here. So it looks pretty similar to the C sharp, except if you notice where I have my design, I'm using uh, the snake case format with the underscore, but there's also, I'm missing a typing on the left hand side. So instead of design, my design equals design.load, it's just nothing there. This is the dynamic portion of Python. So it infers what type that is at runtime. Uh, Additionally, though, uh, if you're using um, modern Python, so 3.5 plus, you can actually explicitly declare types as well. Uh, so in C sharp, we mentioned you use curly braces. In Python, there's, it instead uses uh, colons and indentation. So this line here, you can see that there's just no curly braces. You have the top line, which is defining a method, with a colon at the end to say this is where the method starts and then there's indentation just to uh, say this is what is contained within the method. Uh, I mentioned this before but Python does not contain much structure at all so this is a very very simple script it's not to do with the master API this is just a generic script for finding the area of a triangle but it's just, just to demonstrate the simplicity of the language so this is an entire script uh, and all it has is, you know, a equals five, b equals six, c equals seven. This is defining some constants. Then we've got a few mathematical equations for s and area, and then we just print something out at the end. And that is an entire self-contained script in Python. So I mentioned there's a guide online. This is just a, uh, a quick link available if you do want to uh, have help on getting set up with Python. Okay, and then finally, moving on to MATLAB's ease of use. Uh, so like I said before, MATLAB was designed around engineers and scientists to be very quick to get up and running. There's some different ways you can use MATLAB. So as well as writing scripts like we were talking about in the other languages, you can also interactively use MATLAB. So there's an example on the bottom of this slide of typing stuff in the command window to instant interactively use it and get instant feedback about having to run a whole script. You can also access some of MATLAB's functionality such as curve fitting through, through apps where you can use a GUI without having to even write code and then generate the code afterwards. MATLAB can be run from a single file script but it's also structured around being able to split into multiple files to allow reusability of code. Uh, so here's just a little bit of an example of some MATLAB code structure. Uh, we it's fairly minimal. So you can see here we do have semicolons like we saw in C Sharp, but in MATLAB, this is mostly to suppress output. The code will run without you putting in the semicolons. Uh, and although we do have indentations in this loop, they again aren't necessary for the MATLAB running in the same way they are in Python. You can see we have the end statements to designate the loops here. Uh, one thing about MATLAB is it's weakly typed, which occasionally can be unpredictable. So there's an example here of got two strings added together, and you might expect that it would return a string, but MATLAB will treat the two strings as arrays. So you can see the output in the command window there is an array, which might not have been what you were expecting. So there. There's a lot of help available for MATLAB. MathWorks provides you with a lot of ways to access this as well. In the command window, you can get help for all the uh, MathWorks functions. So here we've got surf, 3D surfaces. Uh, you can also push F1 on things you've written in the editor to pop out help, or there's a lot of documentation on the website, including lots of tutorials and examples and videos. Again, this is all provided by MathWorks for Math MATLAB functions that are inbuilt. And um, if you want to install MATLAB, as we say, this is commercial software provided by MathWorks. So you need to go to the MathWorks website and follow their instructions, purchase your licenses, decide what you want. OK, so next we'll look at the integration with master. And I do want to just pause that. Um, so this could be it's going to be split into two things here. So we'll, we'll be looking mainly at uh, the methodology of running scripts. 
And this could be split into two entries. It could either be an internal script, what you might hear the guys refer to as a, a scripted property. And I've got a little video to show you in a second, or it might be an external script. So that is where it's run outside of master. Uh, what we'll also maybe share is a little bit of information on available debuggers within an applicable piece of software or where it can be used with that particular programming language. So this video is just showing a little demonstration of an internal scripted properties. Uh, and what we mean by this is that they can actually be displayed inside mass themselves. So once you've actually written the code and brought it into master, you can essentially use that in an editor or a report um, as many times as you want. You don't have to then go back to that external code. So it makes it very, very easy to run. Um, doesn't really matter what this example is doing, but you can kind of see over on the right hand side that you can bring in, like this has been automatically populated. You can enter data into it as well. And you've got command buttons in there as well, which actually allow you to run functions from within um, master in terms of code that you've written. And this we have here is an example of an external script. So this particular example is, uh, I think it's a C sharp, yeah, C sharp script, which is just running inside Visual Studio Code. This is just one example of how you could run a script ex externally. There are numerous different ways. But what this essentially means is that you're doing everything from outside of master. So you, you've run your, you've created your code, you're clicking on the go button, and it's actually opening up a model in the background, running whatever analysis or design or whatever you asked it to do, and then pulling back out some results and sending that to a file or whatever you need it to do. Uh, so these are the two types of example running methods that the uh, the guys are going to be talking about as we go through this section. So if we start off with C Sharp. Yeah, uh, so through C Sharp you can create both external and internal scripts. Uh, it's possible to create your own graphical user interfaces through either of these options as well. So you saw you saw there there was a command window as an external script you can also have your own custom uh, user interface as a master property so there's an example on the snt store called the analysis progress example where i made a script that just simply runs all available analyses in master and shows the progress uh, other software already written in C-sharp or another .NET language could directly interact with master software live. So it's also co-simulation is also an option. Uh, we can also debug using Visual Studio Code debugger and attaching it to a running master process. So moving on to Python. So similar to C-sharp, you can create uh, internal master properties or external scripts using Python. That's using our masterpy package, which is a uh, package we've created to interface with the master API using Python. Uh, additionally, you can generate a template for internal master properties from within master. So this is just a, an image of an example of that. So I have a property called root assembly script. Uh, it is a getter. Uh, it, it is attached to a type or a component root assembly, and you can see the generated code there for that. So you can just copy and paste that into the editor, your editor of choice and use it. Uh, additionally, uh, you can also use the Visual Studio Code debugger to uh, debug your scripts. This works for both uh, internal and external scripts. And there's a link there for some for uh, documentation on how to actually get this debugger working for internal and external scripts. And finally, moving on to MATLAB. So for uh, MATLAB, your scripts have to be external. So there isn't any option here to generate a property in master or to run anything having opened the master GUI. So to run scripts in MATLAB, you load the API into MATLAB and then when you want to run your script you'll also load your designs into MATLAB. This will mean you have to load the designs each time you want to run it which potentially can be long depending on what you're doing. Uh, it also means when you want to find properties 
within, you'll have to dig into the design. So there's an example on the bottom of this slide where we're performing a system deflection analysis. And you can see we have to uh, load the design and then index into the design state and then index into the load case. So potentially if you want to find a specific load case in a specific design state, you might have to do some string comparisons here to get there. Whereas if you are internally running, you could just select that load case, you could have already run it in the GUI. So this is where we start to have a bit of a difference between MATLAB and the other two languages. Okay, so next we'll look at scripting support. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this again covers a range of different potential topics. Uh, so it could range from scripting assistance tools. So this might be things that the language itself or programs we can use or programs we can use the language with uh, provide to you to assist with the scripting process. It will also cover what SNT can provide for you in terms of scripting with that particular language. So uh, our support capabilities in terms of troubleshooting scripts or just helping you out uh, and whether we've got any existing documentation for it. And it will also cover things like available learning resources as well. So is there a lot of information on the internet in related to actually just writing code in that particular language? So again, we'll start off with C Sharp. Uh, yeah. Uh, as I was saying before, C Sharp does have uh, extensive documentation already, and a master is written in C Sharp, so we have a lot of uh, we have good amount of support for helping you write scripts in that language. Uh, we would recommend using Visual Studio Code. Uh, it's a free version of Visual Studio, which is the program we use to write master, uh, which we recommend. Yeah, we should recommend. Its intelligence helps with finding properties and with code completion. So as you can see in the picture below, you have the spanner symbols, which are properties. Uh, so you can see that there's uh, the length of a shaft and the mass of a shaft and you've got uh, methods that are little purple boxes so you could maybe pass a different part into that mount component method and it would mount that component on the shaft. The documentation website details the .NET version of the API and provides other helpful learning resources. Uh, this is uh, the helpful learning resources also include um, help for Python and MATLAB. Uh, the as C Sharp is a .NET language, and documenta the documentation is directly relevant when writing C Sharp code. Uh, and it's also directly relevant when writing any other .NET language, so VB.NET, for instance. Okay, moving on to Python. So similar to C Sharp, uh, our Python support, we have full typing intelligence support, just like C Sharp. Uh, we also recommend Visual Studio Code for Python. I mentioned it before. It has a debug and things like that. But you can also use other IDEs, such as Spider or PyCharm. They work just as well. Uh, in particular, Spider, if you're coming from maybe a, a MATLAB background, I've heard it's very similar. Uh, this is just a quick image of the uh, IntelliSense working in Python. So once again, you'll see the snake case uh, and you'll see that I'm on an, an assembly object. So I'm looking at design properties and it tells me it is of type design, which is very helpful. You'll also get this kind of thing in Spider and PyCharm as well, though. Uh, there is currently no Python specific reference for the API. So the, our online reference documentation is for C Sharp. However, the structure of the API is exactly the same in Python. It just has the, those different naming conventions. So instead of Pascal case, it's just, it, you just use snake case instead. And it's almost identical. Uh, we also, of course, have scripting support available for Python. OK, and then on to MATLAB. Um, so for MATLAB, once you've loaded a design into MATLAB, you will be able to use the tab completion to view the different methods and properties on it in a way that's reasonably similar to what you could do with the other two languages in Visual Studio, although you do have to load something before you get the, that in MATLAB. There's some other ways you could uh, delve into your designs in MATLAB. So 
look in the uh, object on the variable explorer here, or you could uh, type interactively into the command window to see potential properties you want to see. Um, from the point of view of support, uh, this MATLAB is going to have the least support compared to the other two languages. The um, SMT staff are not regular MATLAB users in the same way they are C Sharp and Python. So from the actual MATLAB point of view, there'll be a bit less support, but there'll be full support for navigating the API and the different properties that we've provided you. Okay, so the next thing I want to discuss, again, I can pause the video, uh, is about inbuilt and external library capabilities. Uh, so this covers a broad topic of things, really. So, for example, it might be the capability of a particular language to uh, generate plots or to access method libraries, either inbuilt into its core functions or if it's able to access external libraries. So there's a couple of videos here that I can show you as an example. Um, this one is an example script that we have where it's, I think it's a Python script where it is accessing uh, a method, a mathematical method that's already been written by somebody else. So there's no point reinventing the wheel. And what it's doing is the minimize function uh, and we're applying it to master to actually optimize uh, microgeometry to minimize transmission error. And this, I've not got a picture of the script behind this, but it's quite a simple script because we're using the existing methodology. Oh, I thought I did have another video. Hang on. Yes, so here is the other one. Uh, so this is an example of plotting that we want to talk about in this section. So this particular script, which I think, again, uh, I don't know if this one's directly available or not, is, again, using Python. It's where we're just generating, grabbing things from master, and then just using some of the available libraries for the languages to actually generate plots in a different form or to generate new plots. So yes, yeah, so just to summarize, this section is going to be looking at the plotting method, the, the plotting capabilities and the mathematical libraries that we can access using each of those languages. So again, starting with C Sharp. Uh, yeah, so C Sharp has a base class library, which is inbuilt into .NET, and so it's already installed on most, computer, most Windows computers. It provides a multitude of utility methods, so that's uh, complex numbers, um, simple mathematical functions, that sort of thing. Uh, the master API provides the ability to reference other .NET scripts within the C-sharp script. Uh, it is possible to include external libraries in C-sharp scripts by adding references to them in each scripts.cs proj file. So there should be an example of this on the documentation website, but that this is going back to the idea that there's uh, additional files related to when you're writing .NET scripts, and you might need to go into those and add in uh, links or references to other external libraries. Uh, it's also possible to reference NuGet.org packages. NuGet is the package manager for .NET. Uh, package manager is a central repository that many authors will post their code to for others to share, so this is usually free. Uh, it also provides utilities for other languages, so you may maybe you know a language that we haven't listed um, you might be able to get uh, an external library that converts that language into one that you can use in our API. There aren't many easy ways to draw charts in .NET without coding them from scratch but we're planning on providing support for the best way to do this. Okay and Python? So one of the strongest reasons to use Python is because of the uh, vast amount of packages and frameworks developed for it. So the videos you just saw making use of a bunch of packages, uh, in particular NumPy, uh, sorry NumPy, Scikit-Learn, Scikit-Learn is what we use for minimizing, uh, Pandas and Matplotlib. Matplotlib is the graphing library, so the graphs you saw in those videos were generated using Matplotlib. 
uh, it is very easy to install these packages. So in Python, the package manager is pip as opposed to NuGet in C sharp uh, to install the package. It's just this very simple line here. You enter that into the uh, command line. So Python dash m pip, this is how you access pip, the package manager, and then just install numpy. And then we have a couple of images here. There's a graph there generated by matplotlib, uh, similar to what you saw in the video. It's a very powerful graphing library. There's a lot of things you can do with it, 2D and 3D graphs, whatever. And MATLAB. So again, MATLAB includes a lot of libraries for plotting scientific and mathematical um, analysis. Uh, if you go on the MathWorks documentation, you can see there's lots about these which makes it very easy to potentially use complex algorithms without having to learn a lot of computer science yourself. Uh, these libraries are developed and tested by MathWorks for you, so you don't need to worry about any of that. Um, they generally release them all, com all together, so you don't have to worry about incompatible library versions. The, some of them might be in additional toolboxes, so sometimes you might need more licensing to access some of the uh, further capabilities. You can see we've got a picture here of a 3D plot in MATLAB. Okay, and then the final section here is just some additional information which uh, didn't seem to really fit into any particular category previous. Just a couple of slides on this one, and I think the first is to do with C sharp. Yeah, so just uh, something to note is from within the .NET script, it's actually possible to run entire Python scripts or just snippets of Python code by accessing the run Python code method on any master object. You will need to have Python installed, so you will have to still go through all that setup. But it makes it uh, possible to write code in multiple languages. Maybe you've got a team of people who write code in different languages, uh, and then you can maybe reuse that code or and make the most of all the languages on offer in the API. So an example of this that I've uh, looked at previously was using C Sharp to manipulate uh, a large amount of data and then plotting that using Python. Okay, and then a bit more on MATLAB. Yes, so uh, MATLAB also in 2014, so if you're using versions of MATLAB from 2014 onwards, has been allowing integration with Python. So you can do that uh, either way, either by um, calling MATLAB from Python or loading Python libraries into MATLAB. So again, if you've got some previous MATLAB scripts you've written, but now you're thinking about moving to Python, maybe you could look into this as a sort of halfway point. Uh, there's some information on, well, there's a link there for the MathWorks website with some information on doing that. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Um, so that's it in terms of the technical content. I hope that's given you an overview of the different languages that we have available. Uh, we are still open to any questions that you have, so please do ask away. Uh, just a bit of information on events that we have coming up or, or if you want some more training on master scripting or otherwise. So the first thing to note is that because of the current global situation, of course, that our face-to-face -face master workshops are no longer viable. So we have moved our training workshops online. We're currently trialing this with a couple of uh, smaller groups, but they're going very well. So if you keep an eye out on the SMT website, we'll soon have access for, uh, for people to sign up to the, the training going forward. And they'll cover a range of topics. Uh, which will all be detailed on the website. Another thing to note is that we have a growing list of tutorial videos for many different aspects of using master. There are quite a few on scripting there as well. And you should be able to access these at the moment through the SMT portal. Uh, if you do have difficulty doing that, please just drop us an email and we'll be happy to send you links to those. Uh, there are online versions through or access through Wistia, which is basically a, another version of another video hosting platform. So yeah, that's about it from us. Uh, we'll stay on the line if any more questions come in and we'll be, we'll be happy to respond to them. But thank you very, very much for attending.
and I think the next webinar we have planned at the moment is in two months time which is going to be covering uh, troubleshooting your master model but I wouldn't be surprised if there's there's more planned before that again because of the current situation so please do keep an eye on the SMT website so thank you thank you to all the panelists and thank you to all for attending and we'll speak to you quite soon <laughs>